Well, happy weekend, everybody. We have been at it hard today. Lauren's been painting doors. Jafana is going around getting some of the different things in the house ready to go. And I have been laying out and getting things ready to put in our boiler. The shower is ready to go. And all it needs is some hot water. And that is the state of my boiler right now. It needs to get mounted right there. These are OSB walls. I've got a piece of half inch plywood. It's actually a little bit more than half. Uh, I've got 18 screws holding that piece of plywood to the OSB. And then I've got six screws holding this bracket, not only to the plywood, but also to the OSB behind it. I could swing on that thing and do pull-ups and nothing would happen if I could still do pull-ups. All right. You see this oh, bracket yeah, right here? Cool. Yes. All right. That's all. So look right here. Papa. You see that? Yes. It hooks onto that and onto the one on the other side. Okay. You'll be on this side, on the outside, and okay. I'll be right here lifting this up. Okay. You'll be able to see the edge here going right. onto that. Okay. All right. Just it's a little bit bulky, but it's not you know it's not crazy heavy. Okay. All right. I'm ready. All right. You're gonna be yeah. more on that side. Okay. Here. All right. Yeah. Wait, I gotta like position. Hold on. Good. Yeah, hold up there. Ready? Yeah. I'm gonna lift it up. You just lift it away. Okay. Uh, okay, I think I'm I'm on the hook, but not in the middle. Hold on. I'll lift it up and we'll okay. slide it over. That's it. On that's my it? Side. On my side. Well, if it's on your side, it's on my side. Okay, I just don't want to let it go. Oh, no. Where's my, where's my level? I don't, I don't know what you're going to do if I... Here, why don't you go grab my level? <laughs> so what are you going to do? I was going to hold it. Which level do you want? There's water the in that thing. The bullet level. Where's that? I don't think there's anything to worry about. That thing is solidly on that bracket. No, it ain't going nowhere. That thing is on it. It's all good. All right, nice and level, perfect. Plumb, nice. There we go. It's on there. It ain't coming off. It's okay, nice and level. Gotta screw it on. It looks very nice, babe. Very nice. You need to do the holes though, so we have to take it back off there. What, what holes? No, so I'm going to cover that up and drill. I'm going to just get up on the ladder and drill them. I'll bet. Right, right through it? the wall. Yeah. Above it. Okay. Above it. I'm just going to okay. cover it up with plastic so nothing Got can it. get okay. down in it. Nice. Now. There's a whole lot that I've got to do to get this thing plumbed into the house. I have three quarter inch water line coming off here. I got to bring this puppy down and underneath and I'm going to bring it straight across, but I'm going to leave enough space right here so that I can put a spin filter on there. That actually got delivered to the house today. So I got to get busy. When we started this, I wouldn't have used the term dream house, but in reality, that is what I was trying to create. I'd spent more than 20 years planning and yes, dreaming of a life further away from the city with a sense of privacy and independence and a greater connection to nature. I knew what I wanted, or at least some of the features that I wanted, and as part of the compromise process of building something with somebody else, you incorporate their dreams into it as well. There are features of the house that wouldn't be here if one or the other of us wasn't on the build. These little things probably aren't noticed by other people, but to me they stand out, and these are the features that make it uniquely ours. But I need to put this mm -hmm. inside, the door. inside the door. In order for Jafana to keep moving along on the things she's doing, I've got to take a break from the boiler to help her get a door in. We both wear a lot of hats around here, 
And today, she's gonna be a painter. And so I've gotta be a carpenter. See what it looks like in here first. Okay. Exactly how I thought it should go. Um, you want half the gap? Uh, yes, half the gap. Is it is it standing proud of the wall? Yes, it is. It's 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 on your side of the wall. Yes, on the left hand side, my left. Push it all the way in. Uh -huh. Now I can. Okay, now yes. Would you like to be in charge? Because <laughs> only one of us can do that. Oh. There. All right, so it's all the way in. Yes. All right. Uh-oh. Just relax. <laughs> this is normal. Okay. I hope to know. The concept of radiant heat is nothing new. The ancient Romans had heated floors and walls, and they could build houses with raised floors over a tiled space underneath called a hypocaust that extended into and up the walls. There was an outdoor fireplace called a perfernium located at an entry to the hypocaust, and convection would draw some of the heated air and combustion gases up and through the open channels, heating the floors and walls. The concept was fine-tuned in the Roman baths, which required heated spaces much like a sauna, and they would locate the perfernium in the middle of the structure, controlling the amount of heat each room got by the number of channels that they built into the walls. As you can probably tell by the subtle change in shirt, it is a different day. The front Two are domestic hot, or rather domestic water, domestic hot water. This is your cold coming in, your hot coming out. This is the heater. This is your cold going in, or actually your return supply coming in, and this is your supply. So this is the hot water coming out. It goes out, does all its magic, comes back in, goes into here if it needs to, and gets reheated. I got to get this in, and I got to make some progress. So tonight, I'm going to do every single thing of this that I can. These are my two closed tees from my primary loop. I'm supposed to have four inches between these because these are one inch, four times the diameter between them. There's no way to get that close because I'm using pecs. I am about four and three quarter inches. I'm supposed to have a minimum of six lengths of the diameter coming off. On each side, I'm going to exceed that because I'm going to be tying things into it. So I'm gonna make sure I'm at least six before I turn. I've done all the planning, I've drawn this out, I've thought about this six ways to Sunday. While it's quite possible that the Romans came upon their hypocaust design entirely on their own, they were not the first to embrace radiant heat. In China over 7,000 years ago, they developed bed floors of pounded clay they would set a fire on it and then sweep the embers and the ashes off it before bedtime, and it would radiate heat out for hours. Repeated fire cycles made this platform smooth and durable, and this progressed to the Kong, a raised platform with channels under it to be heated by flue gases of a fire. Bam. Good lord. Did you drive that up? There you go. 
Did that, did that help you? Yes. Made you feel better? Yes. So what is this thing right here? That's what is this? Yeah. This is an expansion tank. So in case it builds up too much pressure in the system, uh -huh. this has a little wiggle room so it can expand down into the tank a little okay. bit. And also um, this thing up top is an yeah. air filter. It's a it's an air remover, basically. Okay. It purges any air that gets into the system. This is not oxygen um, barrier PEX. This is okay. regular water service PEX. And as such, it's a semi-permeable membrane. And that means that oxygen can get through it. Air can get into the water line and that will rust out your components uh, like the pump. Yeah. And so this, as, as any air bubbles form, they'll come this direction because they're going to come out mm -hmm. of the of the heater and they the the best place to get them is as close to the heater as possible mm -hmm. so they come out of the boiler they come this direction they go into here and they roll up mm -hmm. there's a bunch of little mesh in here and so the air hits the mesh and then works its way it collects and when the bubbles become big enough they rise up when you get enough air in the top here, there's a little stopper that it, the air basically pushes the stopper down mm -hmm. and it burps out the air and then the water level goes back up and it closes it back up. Oh, so you don't really set it. Did you attach the other side? Yep, it's on. Okay. Now this, like I said, this is temporary. Mm -hmm. I'm going to put a brace up top that goes down and goes underneath of this spiral vent because mm -hmm. I don't like the idea, because this is going to have... Um, 15 to 20 pounds of water in it. So I don't want it pulling down mm -hmm. on the pipe like that. But right now I just need to get these things in the correct orientation. Yeah. I've got the offsets here so that that's not up on the wall. I had to recut those pipes because I didn't have enough wiggle room like I thought I was going to. But as it stands right now, everything looks pretty good. This pipe, I'll put a pipe off here coming down. One off that one coming down, they'll clear both those supply and return pipes. Flexible line is going on here, so we should be good. I'm gonna cut a piece of one inch pipe to connect those two together. Are you doing all this tonight? Yes. <laughs> you make these deadlines for yourself. Well, uh, it's not for me. Yeah, I didn't make this deadline. The deadline is that we can't move into the joint until this full piece is done, so I don't have much choice. What you got here? Dirt. What? How did that get in there? I have no idea. I was I wondering why you're blowing. Get the dirt out. Alright. Is that his bad breath of yours? Does it smell like garlic? <laughs> if it smells like butt, it's his. If it smells like garlic, it's mine. <laughs> We had bagels this morning, and I was enjoying your breath a little while ago, too. <laughs> bagel was I love so it. good. It was worth it. In addition to the Chinese, in Korea, the concept of warming hearths and radiant heat showed a steady progression from 3000 to 1000 BC, culminating in the Andul, which was also a system of underfloor flues carrying combustion gases to heat stones in the floor. Ruins from the 2nd century BC show similar structures in Syria and Afghanistan. With the fall of the Roman Empire, most radiant heat technology seems to have fallen from favor in the West for several centuries, with the exception of cast iron wood stoves. In the early 1800s in Europe, systems of pipes were used and some upscale houses to produce heat from hot water and steam. And by the end of the 19th century, radiators were common in Europe. By the early 1900s, interest was building up in American architectural design. And in 1936, Frank Lloyd Wright used a system with wrought iron pipes and a gravity-fed hot water system to heat the Jacobs house in Madison, Wisconsin. After World War II, there was a hunger in American public for home ownership, and Lewis and Sons created over 17,000 nearly identical homes in Lewistown, New York, 
It was an assembly line style of building at an epic scale, where they incorporated boilers and copper pipes built into the cement floor slabs. While some of these systems lasted over 50 years, failure rates were high, with most of them experiencing some sort of a leak within 15 years, creating an entire industry dedicated just to the repair of these systems. All right, baby, come take a look at this. Wow. We're almost there. <laughs> really? Almost for a sec. You doing this tonight? Yeah, I'm not gonna punch the holes, but okay. um, I'm gonna get that uh, hot water pipe, that's the domestic hot water pipe. I'm gonna get it fixed up there, get an angle in it, and bring it down to here, and then connect it in. Okay. And then we just have to punch the hole to the outside. You gotta have two holes to go to the outside. Okay. But at that point, we're done. Oh my gosh. Right. We'll have hot water this weekend. Well, we won't have it this weekend because we won't have any gas. Oh, well, that's. <laughs> gotta have propane. <laughs> Good point. Apollo's sad. He's sad. He's sad because I won't let him out into the dark anymore tonight. And so he don't he don't want to be here no more if he can't go outside and hunt. Set this down. Get this in here all the way, and just hold it there for a bit. Give it a good twenty or thirty seconds. In 1965. Thomas Engel patented the process for making polyethylene pipe, PEX, and most radiant systems today are made with PEX tubing. The interest in radiant heat systems continues to grow, but the cost for entry is high and the payback is slow, and with about 3,000 feet of PEX pipe in our floors separated into three zones, this house will be a living experiment to see how efficient and how effective it is. To start, we are only connecting the first manifold with about 1,200 feet of pipe laid out on the far side of the house. The design of the system makes it easy for us to bring the other sections online when we're ready. Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys next time.